What is the true meaning of the Christmas tree? Hmm. As I'm continuing my studies into the issue of Christmas and uh, all the different things associated with it and Christmas trees and whatever else, uh, walking back through the woods right now, it's pretty deep snow here. You can see down there at my feet, um, hopefully. Uh, so just out here enjoying the morning, beautiful morning. But as I've been doing some research, I found some rather interesting information. You see, it turns out that according to multiple sources that I have read, the very first one man to bring a fir tree into his house and decorate it for Christmas time was actually Martin Luther. Hmm, the German reformer. And the reason he did it is because he was walking out in the forest in the winter and he saw the stars shining through the, through the needles of the Christmas tree, like that, of a fir tree. And uh, he said it reminded him of Jesus. And you say, oh, for Christ, it reminded him of Jesus. It reminded him of Jesus. Um, well, if you have a problem with that, then you're kind of ignorant of the scriptures because you see the Bible says in uh, Hosea chapter 14, verse eight, I'll put the verse up on screen here. Uh, it's God talking to Ephraim and he says, I am like a green fir tree. Huh, a green fir tree. God likens himself to a green fir tree. Now, if you're kind of from the city or you're ignorant of the situation, what you might not understand is there's a very unique characteristics to green fir trees. Let me show you. Right here is one. Okay. How do you know it's a green fir tree? Well, it has these little, little bumps right here. And inside that, there's, there's sap. And you know the interesting thing about this, this is a balsam fir tree. The interesting thing about this tree, that sap actually has antiseptic properties to it. It actually can heal you. Hmm. And uh, this is actually a very medicinal tree. Not only can the sap heal you, it also puts off an essential oil into the atmosphere, which actually can increase T blood cells in your immune system. You come out here and you smell the Oh boy, the air, and you can just feel your spirit lift. Huh, so you get around a green fir tree and it can heal you and put you in a better mood? Hmm, interesting. You say, but it's a pagan thing to bring it into the house and whatever else, okay, where does it say that in the scriptures? Where does it ever talk about uh, people bringing trees into their homes, the Christmas tree, the fir tree, and uh, that's somehow pagan and satanic and you shouldn't do it? It's never condemned in scripture. And if you want to go to Jeremiah chapter 10 and try to pull that one off, I already did a whole sermon refuting that. It's talking about a carved idol. It's not talk talking about a green fir tree. So um, you can make whatever you want of the Christmas season. It's a liberty issue. Holidays are liberty issues. What you do with them. Um, if you don't want to celebrate it, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But um, I look at my fir trees on my property here a lot differently now that I know that they're actually, they relate in many ways to the Lord. And um, when we see God in the future, when we get caught up, he's actually on his throne and he's red. And around about the throne is a rainbow like unto an emerald, green, red and green. Hmm, very interesting, very telling. So all these pagans out there that are, all these, uh, I shouldn't say pagans, but uh, in some ways they're pagan. Um, <laughs> But uh, all these people out there that are just, oh, the Christmas tree's pagan, ah, you know, and all this stuff. Um, you might want to be more, a little bit more careful about your research and whatever else. Uh, if my sources are correct, um, Martin Luther was the first one, a saved man. And I've been back and forth on the thing saved or lost, but I believe he was saved. Uh, just... A lot of the stuff that was written supposedly by him, like the Jews and their lies, um, I've, again, seen sources that they're saying, no, he didn't even write that. Um, so rather interesting there. But uh, another thing that's interesting is if you actually study what the Catholics were doing at that time in the 16th century and even up to modern times, they don't bring Christmas trees in their house. The Catholics, they have a little manger. And if you do good deeds, you get a little piece of straw and you put pieces of straw into the manger. And if there's enough straw there, then the Christ child, the Christkind, will come and actually 
up here there Christmas Eve and he'll be there for Christmas morning and he'll bring you gifts and whatever else. The Christ child comes every Christmas, which is absurd when you think about it. Jesus came once as a child, grew up to be a man and he died on the cross. He doesn't reappear as a child and come back Christmas Eve every year. It's stupid. That's pagan. That is pagan. But looking and seeing a tree and saying it reminds me of the Lord because the Bible says in Hosea 14, 8, God likens himself to the green fir tree. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. And, um, oh, well, you know, where does the Bible say we're supposed to do anything like that and, and remember his birth and whatever else? Well, we're supposed to remember his death. You know, this doing remembrance of me. You know, speaking about the what we would call communion. So watch out for a lot of this, this uh, stupid nonsense you know, legalistic bunch of, you know, pharisaical people that come out with their Christmas is evil, Christmas is pagan, and whatever else. You have every right to say, eh, commercial, you know, the commercialism of Christmas is something that I'm not for. That's fine. Doesn't matter. But when you start coming out and saying, you know, forbidding Christians to celebrate the holidays, um, you have somebody that's not right with God. They're basically fighting against liberty at that point in time. We're to look into the perfect law of liberty. Um, the Lord's made us free from all kinds of man-made ordinances and everything else. Uh, we're not to be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. You don't understand the grace that the Lord has and His liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You reject the liberty that God gives, you're rejecting the Holy Spirit. It's just that simple. So, um, just a, a beautiful thing. Here we have a here we have a spruce tree right here behind me. Not quite the same as a green fir tree, but um, another little green fir tree right here, like this. But uh, just amazing. And I've seen these things. I mean, you can see the if you can see some of the snow just glistening on the on the needles and things here. The leaves, I guess you could technically call them. It's a just beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and a reminder of the Lord. And this tree can heal you, just like the Lord can heal you. You better think about that before you get into all this, this uh, vehement hatred of Christmas stuff.